Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 133 with Dr. Jeff Spencer. Now, some of my favorite parts of this episode were when he gives us his goal achievement roadmap. This is what he uses with all of his elite athletes, entrepreneurs, artists, and everyone that he works with. I also loved when he talks about the two different mindsets that we all have and how we must think about our legacy when setting goals. This is something that I haven't really thought about, but there is so much more wisdom and inspiration that you get in the full episode. So to listen to the full podcast and get all the info in the show notes, head on over to melissaambrosini.com forward slash 133 right now. Welcome, Jeff. Well, I'm so excited to have you on the show and you have an amazing story. So can you take us back and share with us your journey and how you got to where you are today doing the work that you do now and being known as the corner man? How did this all happen? When I was seven years old, I thought the coolest thing ever would be to be in the Olympics and walk into the stadium on the opening day ceremony and walking and marching in the parade. I thought that'd be the coolest thing ever. So I had this self-starting gene where I never needed to be motivated. So I got involved in cycling and then devoted myself at 10 years. I drew my little plan on how I was going to become an Olympian. I gave myself 10 years to do it. And then 10 years later, I was actually an Olympic cyclist for the U.S. United States Olympic cycling team. And That was a pivotal moment for me because it taught me what it really took to to get to the pinnacle. And I think that unless you've been there, you can't possibly study enough to really understand the nuances of it. And part of that process, the last time I saw my dad when I was 13, and I found out 30 years later that he died homeless on the streets in New York City. And he was literally a genius with every ounce of talent and, and will anybody could imagine. So that kind of debunk the myth that will and talent are enough to get you to be a full potential player. And so I realized that there was more to it than that. And then I was studying sports science in the university while I was training for the Olympics. So I eventually got a master's degree in sports science. So with that background, people in sport came to me that wanted to win gold medals and wanted to become a highly paid professional athletes. And Then business people came to me that wanted to become their own champions, and I became an advisor to them on how to do that. And then I got a lot of questions asked about, well, how do I get and stay well from the business people? Because they saw that most of their colleagues and peers were blowing themselves up prematurely and succumbing to early catastrophic illness or relationship failure, and they didn't want to repeat that or be part of that. And the athletes knew that if they had too many injuries too often that they would shortcut their career and never become what they could be. So I decided to go back to school, which I did to become a primary healthcare provider so I could diagnose and treat injuries and maintain a level of wellness that would allow a person to perform at their best consistently over time and create the best legacy possible. So with that wide breadth of understanding of what it took to get to the top and stay there. A lot of people that were peak performers in their disciplines, whether it be sport, business, or entertainment, came to me as like the guy that could figure out the work of 10 different specialists on how to prescribe and create an individual plan for me to be able to get to the top of my game and stay there. And that was really the process that that I went through. Wow. Okay. And so you have worked with and you've mentored people like Tiger Woods, U2, Bulletproof, Nike, plus so many other world-class performers, entrepreneurs, athletes, and creatives. Tell us what you teach them. What are the foundations that you teach them to achieve greatness? For everyone listening, how can we do it? Well, I think the first thing to realize is that greatness is not an accident. It's purposeful by design. And there has to be a structure that the hope and the dream is placed in that can usher it through life's minefield to manifestation. And that's the first and foremost thing to to really be mindful of is that, again, there needs to be a structure. So what I've I've done over my 40 years plus experience in the high-performance world is I've actually created a model that I use with my clients, whether they be individuals, business people, teams, or organizations. And it's called the Goal Achievement Roadmap. And there are 
kind of two basic things that we always need to keep in mind is that we need to prepare well to be able to perform at our best. And so my motto is you do the homework and the test is easy. And there's essentially five different steps to making sure that you prepare correctly to be able to effectively start pursuing your goal. So preparation, you have to get goal clarity because when we're clear on our goal, we have goal focus. We can attend to details that need to get done to advance our progress towards goal completion. It also gives us a situational awareness. The second thing we need to do is to really understand and have the right motives that are the basis for which we're pursuing our goal. And when we have the right motives, it gives us drive. And certainly we have to have the drive to be able to stay in the game long enough to achieve goals, especially the more loftier goals. The The third part of preparation is impact. I feel that people really need to take a look and think about in advance of pursuing their goal, what the impact of their goal is going to be on themselves, on others, and on the world around them. And when we look at the impact of our goal, what that does, that changes our level of purpose that extends more than just what's in it for us, but what's the impact of our work on others and our families, on nature, and on society in general. And purpose is extraordinarily important because it's like a core conviction to be able to start and finish the process of goal achievement. And then step number four in preparation is mindset. And when I'm talking about mindset, I'm talking about the ability to respond from that part of our human nature that's innately driven towards achieving excellence. And we do have an excellence gene within us that kind of compels us to create a life of contribution and value. And why that's important is that champions have learned that there are certain things that they do that creates the mindset that makes the extraordinary, their normal, rather than the occasional exception. And when we know what those principles are, then it gives us courage, which is probably the rarest of all human attributes. And when we have courage, we have an unconditional willingness to be able to to pursue our goal. So how can we get our mind in the game, especially if we have a really loud inner critic? I call it your inner mean girl or your (laughs) inner bad boy. You know, especially if we've got that really loud voice in our head that's like, you won't do this, you can't do that, you won't achieve the goal, you may as well give up. What are some of your tips and advice on how to make sure our mind is in the game? I think the first and foremost thing to understand is really the nature of what the voice really is, the inner critic, you know, and the way that I see it is that our human nature is made up of two mindsets. The first part of human nature is the human mindset. And the human mindset are fear-based impulses. And those fear-based impulses are geared towards achieving one thing, and that's survival. It's all about survival. And when we talk about survival in our human mindset and our fear-based survival instincts, they could care less about excellence because it's not about excellence. It's about survival. And the problem with our survival instincts is that they certainly get first dibs at every moment of our life because survival sometimes is the difference between a split second. So that biology that is programmed into us that's on 24 hours a day that you cannot turn off, it is always there in everyone. It's just that we don't talk about it. We think we're the only one that has it. It not only is not capable of creating excellence in our life because that's not its motive, but it also, the very best that it can do for us is repeat history. It cannot create a bigger history for ourselves. The other side of this, though, is that we have the champion's mindset as well, which is the second half of human nature. And the champion's mindset is all about our success instincts. And we do have instincts that are genetically programmed into us that are perhaps even stronger than our fear-based survival impulses that drive us towards creating a life of contribution and value and excellence. And because it's a more highly evolved 
brain function. It doesn't get first dibs at every moment, but it does override our human fear-based survival instincts. And when we follow the champion's mindset, then it does allow us to make history. And so we have to be clear that there are two mindsets within us that are at war 24 hours a day for control over our decision making. Our human mindset is all about survival. It's fear based. The champion's mindset is all about excellence. It's about bigger future. How important do you think mentors are on our journey to achieving greatness and achieving our goals? You know, for me personally, I have had many different mentors in my life, health, business, personally, spiritually, formal mentors, not so formal. How important do you think it is? Do you feel like everyone needs a mentor or do some people not? No, I think everybody needs a variety of different mentors at different times in their life because none of us know enough to peek around the corner into the future to have the wisdom that people have that have preceded us. And I feel that one of the ways that we compress our learning curve to be able to get to our bigger future as quickly as possible to produce as many successes as we can to create a memorable legacy really demands that we make as few as mistakes as possible. But we can't possibly understand what most of the preventable problems are until we unfortunately have the problem and then learn through the experience. But when we have mentors with experience that can point things out in advance so that we prevent preventable problems by not succumbing to them, then we conserve a lot of time, energy, and resources in the process. So I feel that a mentor is absolutely essential in a variety of different categories. You know, we have a variety of different areas of life that, that all need some level of informed input. So I, to me, it's essential. I think to try to do it by yourself, it may take you 20 years to do something that with sound counsel and advice you could do in two years. What would you say to someone who's listening who has never thought about the legacy that they are going to leave or what they want to be remembered for? Like I think about I have a 12-year-old bonus son and I think about him and I think when I've left this physical body, what do I want him to say about me? Like what do I want him to talk to his children about, about me? Like what, you know, and I, and I often think about that and I ponder on that. And so then I can reflect on my actions in everyday life and make sure that they're aligned with that legacy. So for people who are listening, who have never pondered this, What would you say? What's your advice? When we talk about legacy, the thing that comes to mind for me is that that's our immortal footprint that's left on the journal of human history for all time that we'll share with people what we did with our time and our talents. And to me, that can tell a very important story that is part of the immortality that we leave behind. Because like, for example, my father, that was a genius that died homeless, you know, his legacy is, well, he was a guy that could but didn't and never will be able to. Whereas somebody that has traveled a path that has thought about what other people will learn from their life experience that gets left behind may be really a roadmap of how to create a life of personal value but immense contribution to humanity. I'd love to hear, what do you attribute all of your success to if you had to pin it down? What would it be? I I would say, first and foremost, I've always been receptive to possibility and pursuing the prospects of what's possible. And I've always had a natural curiosity in that when things are presented to me where I feel like I'm a bit called to them, I'm fearless about engaging them and doing what's necessary to evolve them as far as they can go. You know, I I did that with the uh, sporting call. I made the Olympics. I did that with art. You know, I was a glass art sculptor and was kind of called to that and showed in the best galleries in New York City. And so there are other things that I've done, four or five different categories similar to that. And I can only say that when there's something that I'm called to, that I know I'm committed to do, I just go all in on it. But there's a qualification to this to say that I've I've never done anything 
to create a monument to self to fill a void that I didn't have within myself. I was never motivated by someone saying, well, you can't do it, so I'm going to do it to show you that I can. I'd never found that that was an adequate motivation for me. It was purely out of respect to, to honor the privilege of you know, being given an opportunity and in, in doing that and being fearless. And I, and I don't mean reckless. I mean, being fearless about answer the calling that's given me a, an extra kind of energy source to get things done that hasn't taken a lot of substance out of me because it was never based on me for my own glory or my own security. It was never based on fear of loss or need for excess security. I always kind of felt like if I honored the privilege, then part of the reward would be to be always have enough to do what I needed to do and, and fulfill my obligations. 